everyone and welcome back to Noah Science Practicals. I'm Miss Parsons and today we are going to be looking at finding out about reactions. So the aim of this lesson today is to be able to carry out a series of reactions and we're also going to be able to name some types of observations that can help us identify whether a chemical reaction or a physical reaction has happened. So we're going to be able to use lots of different types of apparatus we're going to make accurate observations and we're going to be recording our data in our table. So I'm just going to go under, under the visualiser and we're going to have a look at this worksheet together. So this is a worksheet that you should have open that has been set to you as an assignment. So it's 6.1.1, finding out about reactions. So if we have a look at the setting scene, um, it says a chemical reaction is a change in which atoms are rearranged to create new substances. So this is what we're going to be looking at today, chemical reactions, and we're also going to be looking at physical reactions and physical changes. So hopefully from your last lesson where you were doing a theory on this, you will remember some of the observations that we could see for a chemical change and some of the observations that we will see for a physical change. So we've spoke through our aims. We've got a little section on safety, okay, and I'm going to have my hair up because we're going to use a Bunsen burner at different parts of the lesson today. And I am also going to be wearing goggles because we're going to be using some acids. So the first task that I want you to do is the prediction. So it says state observations you might expect to see when two chemicals react. So what you can do here is you can just list anything you might see when a chemical or a physical change happens. So have a think back to that theory lesson and you can jot down maybe a minimum of three things that you think we might be able to see when a chemical or physical change happens. So pause the video here and please just spend a minute doing that. Okay, so you should have your prediction done now. Um, so we're going to have a look now through the method. So the way that this practical is laid out is we're going to have different stations. So we have stations A to F and what they are is just little practicals and we're going to come to the conclusion after each practical whether it has shown a chemical or a physical change. So if we look at station A, we're going to be using three centimetre cubed of vinegar and we're going to add that to a glass beaker and then add a spatula of bicarbonate of soda. Then we're going to write down in our observation table what we have seen. So we're going to start with station A now, so I'm going to put my goggles on. So step one was to measure out three centimetre cubes of vinegar using a measuring cylinder. So I've got my measuring cylinder here and I've got my vinegar. Now this is just vinegar from Sainsbury's, it's just from the supermarket. Everything that we're actually using in station A is all things that you can buy from the supermarket. So we're just going to add three centimetre cubed into here. Okay, so I've got my three centimetre cubed and then I'm going to add that into my small beaker. And I'm going to put this here so that you can see that a bit clearer. And then I've got to add a spatula of my bicarbonate of soda. Now you might use this when you do baking at home, okay? You find it on the baking aisle at Sainsbury's or Tesco. So I'm just going to add a small spatula of this into my vinegar. I'll hold this up to the camera a bit closer so you can see exactly what happens in a moment. Okay, so if I hold that up a bit closer to the camera, what we can see is that we're seeing a lot of fizzing, okay? We're seeing that layer of bubbles um, on top of our vinegar. So you can see that's getting bigger, we're getting more vigorous bubbling and there's a lot of fizzing happen that, happening there. So you can see that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to fill in our results table. So for station A, which is what we've just done, our observation was we saw a lot of fizzing. And what I'm going to do for this whole practical is I'm going to circle the key observation that leads us to the um, decision as to whether it's a chemical or physical change. So we've seen fizzing. And fizzing is a sign of a chemical change, okay? And remember, from your la lesson earlier in the week, a chemical change is not reversible 
Whereas a physical change, it is reversible. Okay? So we've got reversible or not reversible. So this reaction of vinegar and uh, bicarbonate of soda is not reversible. Okay, we wouldn't be able to get that bicarbonate of soda back from that pro those products and we've seen a lot of fizzing. So we've got a tick in our chemical reaction box. So please make sure you've got this support sheet open as well and you can be filling in the table as we're going through. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at station B now. So station B says measure out five centimetres cube of solution A using our measuring cylinder. So I've got solution A. Now, if you have a look, solution A is a red solution. So it's this red solution here. And then it says that we're going to add five centimetres cubed of solution B, which is this blue solution. OK, and we're going to see what happens. So have a, make a prediction just in your head, just for a minute. What do you think we might see when we're adding our red solution A to our blue solution B? So I've got my two measuring cylinders and I've got my small beaker. So I'm going to add five centimetres cubed of solution A first, which was the red one. So I'll carefully pour that out. Okay, so I've got my five centimetre cubed of solution A going into the beaker. Then I'm going to measure the same amount of solution B. Okay, so I'll bring this closer to the camera. So what you can see is we've got that red solution of um, solution A. Now I'm going to add my blue solution. I'm going to give that a little stir. Okay, and what you can see is we've had a colour change. We've got this yellow solution now. So we've seen a colour change for station B. So if we come back over to our table, for station B, our observation was a colour change. So when we added red to blue, it went orange. Okay, so solution one was red, solution B, uh, two was blue, and we ended up with our product being orange. So we've seen a colour change. Now a colour change, again, is a sign of a chemical reaction, okay? So colour change is a sign of a chemical reaction, it's a non-reversible reaction. So we're going to go on to station C now. Now station C says place two spatulas of zinc oxide into a test tube. We're then going to use our tongs to hold that test tube while we put it into our Bunsen burner to heat it up and we're going to see what happens. And then we're going to let it cool down and see what happens then as well. So I've got my zinc oxide and I'm just going to carefully put about two spatulas of this into my test tube. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, there we are. So if I hold that up to the camera, you can see that that's a white powder. Zinc oxide is a white powder. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to use the tongs to hold this because it'll get hot. I'm going to put my flame onto a hot flame and I'm going to put my zinc oxide into there to heat it up. So we'll see what happens. When, when there's a change, I'll show you at the nearer camera. Okay, so I can see there's a slight colour change now. It's going from white to like a pale yellow. I'm going to leave that in there for a bit longer so that we can see the full extent of the colour change because it does say leave it in there for a minute or so. Okay, so we're getting a more prominent yellow colour now.
Okay, so if I bring that nearer to the camera, what you can see is that powder has now gone yellow. Now, as I've taken that out of the Bunsen burner, straight away, it's nearly going back to the white colour. Now, I reckon in a few seconds time, that will have gone back completely white. So when we heated it up, it went um, yellow. And now that, we, now that we've let it cool again, it's gone back to white. So we'll write that down in our results table. Okay, so for station C, we also saw a colour change. However, this one was reversible. Okay, because it's gone from white to yellow to white as it cooled down. So this is an example of a physical change because we've got that reversible colour change, white to yellow to white. So we're going to go on to experiment D now. So experiment D asks us to measure out 25 centimetre cubes of hydrochloric acid in our measuring cylinder and then we're going to pour that into a small beaker and add a marble chip. So we've got my hydrochloric acid, so I'm going to um, measure out 25 centimetre cubed of that. Okay, I'm going to add that into my beaker. I've got my beaker here. And then I'm going to add a marble chip. Now we'll see how it works with one marble chip. And if we need to add some little ones, then we can do that as well so that you can see it a bit clearer. Okay, so I'll bring this up close. Okay, so you can see that beaker that's got the hydrochloric acid in. I'm now going to add in my marble chip and I'll bring that closer to you. So what you should be able to see is on the right hand side there, you can see the marble chip fizzing away. Okay, it's producing a gas. And you can see there's a lot of fizzing there. Okay, so we're going to write that down in our table. So when we've added our marble chip into our hydrochloric acid, we've got fizzing. So for D, we've got fizzing again. Okay, fizzing is our observation. So that is going to be a chemical change. Okay, it's non-reversible reaction. Um, and the fizzing, just to make a note, the fizzing means that a gas is being produced. Okay, so one of the questions in the extension tasks asks you, what do all of these observations actually show? So when something fizzes, it shows that a gas is being produced. Okay, so we're going to go on to station E now. Now, station E, it asked us to use chocolate, but we didn't actually have any chocolate in school today, okay, or we will have ate it all. So we've actually got butter instead. So we've got some butter here, just a um, slab of butter that we're going to use instead of chocolate, okay? It works the exact same way. So station E told us that they wanted us to add um, some butter, okay, because we're going to use butter now, into our boiler, into our test tube, and we're going to heat that up using the Bunsen burner. We're then going to leave that to cool and see what happens then. So I'm just going to use my spatula just to get a small amount of butter and put that into my test tube. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more because um, so that we can see exactly what happens. Okay, I'll try and force that down a little bit. Oh. Okay, it's already starting to melt slightly, so it's not wanting to force its way down. Let's try with these, there we are. Okay, so I'm gonna use my tongs again to hold this when I'm putting it into the Bunsen burner. So currently, I have got my solid butter in my test tube. So I'm gonna heat that up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so already that butter is starting to melt and slide down to the bottom of the boiling tube. Okie dokie. So if I hold that up to the camera now, we can see already just in those few seconds that we were heating up that test tube that the butter, the solid butter has melted to form the liquid. Okay, so we can see that that's a liquid now. 
So we're going to write that into our table. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to a beaker of ice and we're going to see how that looks in a few minutes time after we've done station F. So I've got my beaker of ice here. I'm going to add my test tube into there. I'm also going to add a few drops of water just to make sure it's all um, covered. And then we'll do station F and then we'll come back to have a look at how station E is doing. So I'll just leave that to the side. Okay, so we're going to go on to station F now. So station F, I need to measure out two centimetre cubes of hydrochloric acid using my measuring cylinder. I'm going to then place that into a test tube and put it into my test tube rack. Then I'm going to carefully add one strip of magnesium ribbon. Okay, these were about two centimetres long. So I'm going to add that into my um, hydrochloric acid and I'll hold that up to the camera so that you can see what happens there. So I've got my hydrochloric acid, just going to measure out about two centimetres cubed. Okay. So I've got my empty test tube here. Add in my two centimetres cubed, so I hold that up to the camera. Okay, so colourless solution, two centimetres cubed. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in one strip of this magnesium ribbon. So I'll hold that up to the camera and now I'm going to add in that. Okay. And what you can see, you might be able to hear it if you listen really carefully, is um, that that solution is now fizzing. Okay, the magnesium is reacting with the hydrochloric acid and we can see lots of bubbles being formed. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So I'll put that back into my test tube rack and we will write that in our table. So remember that was station F. So when the magnesium was added into the hydrochloric acid, we saw fizzing, okay? And, oh, I think we meant to measure the temperature with that one. So we'll do it again, that one as well. So we've seen fizzing, we've definitely seen fizzing, but we'll do it again really, really quickly and measure the temperature as well this time. So we'll just repeat the experiment. Okay, you can watch it for a second time. Okay, so two centimetres cubed into my test tube, an empty one. Okay, then I'm going to measure the temperature of that. Okay, it's probably going to be around room temperature. It's quite warm in here because obviously we've got the Bunsen burner going. But we'll see what that gets to. Okay, so that's showing at about 23 degrees. So the test, the thermometer's showing at about 23 degrees. So the hydrochloric acid is at that temperature. Now I'm going to add in a strip of the magnesium again, okay? And I'll hold that up to the camera so you can see it fizzing again. And we'll see if there's any change in temperature. So you can hear and see it fizzing. And I'm going to leave the thermometer in there while that's reacting and see if there's any change. So already it started to go up by one or two degrees. Okay, we'll leave it until it stops increasing. So you can see it's still bubbling. Okay, so that's already got to 30 degrees. If I touch the bottom of the test tube, I can actually feel that heat that's being produced. Okay, so it's got to about 30 degrees. So we'll write that down on our table. So we'll just add that to where we put fizzing. So fizzing is one thing that we saw and a temperature change. And ours was an increase by seven, seven degrees. Okay, so the temperature change. And that shows a chemical reaction, okay, chemical change. Now, if we go back to that butter, 
that we left in our um, test tube earlier, okay? What we can see is that has now solidified, okay? We have solid butter back now. So when we heated it up, it went to an oil or a liquid. And now, as it's been cooling in that water, okay, in the cold water with the ice, it's gone to a solid. So we'll jot that down on E. So this was, a, again, a reversible reaction. We started with a solid, then we went to a liquid as we heated it, and then we ended up with a solid as it cooled. So we heated and then we cooled here for it to go back to a solid. So remember, if it's reversible, that's a sign of a physical change. So if you need to pause the video here and fill in your table, then feel free to do so. But station A, we saw fizzing showing a chemical change. Station B, we saw a colour change showing a chemical change. C, we saw it was reversible because it changed colour then went back to the original colour, showing a physical change. D, we saw fizzing, so a chemical change. E, showed the reversible reaction again, going from a solid to a liquid to a solid, so that was physical. And then F, we saw fizzing and a temperature change, so showing a chemical reaction. So if you want to pause the video here and jot that down on your support sheet. Okay, so you should have that table fully completed now. Now, the last thing you need to do for this lesson is to try the questions, okay? So on page three of the worksheet, there is questions. So you've got questions one to seven, okay? So you need to try questions one to seven, and then if you finish that in the time that your teacher gives you, you can also go on to the extension task. Once you've done that, okay, um, your teacher will go through the answers of those with you. Okay, so we've finished today's practical. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and hopefully you feel more confident now on being able to tell the difference between a physical and a chemical change. So if we review our aims of today's lesson, our aim was to be able to carry out a series of reactions. We've definitely done that, okay? We've done stations A to F and we've done those all successfully. And we've also been able to name some of the ob observations we would see um, to be able to compare a chemical and a physical change. So we've definitely hit both of those aims for today's lesson. So thank you for joining. Um, I'll see you next week for another practical in science video.